The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Part 3 of the OUYA project rages on, driving the members of the Ben Heck Show team mad with insanity. To keep their composure, they play pinball. Bank shot for the target. Oh, nice save from a drain recovery there. And there's a sling target. Allison's really hoping to go to nationals this year. She needs to improve her game. And there's a drain down the middle. I feel a lot better after playing a few games of pinball. Yeah, I do too. We should get back to work on the Ouya. Oh yes. Let's finish this thing. Where are we walking to? Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. In the last episode, you left me working long into the night to design the case for the Ouya Portable. Since then, I 3D printed many of the parts, and now I can start assembling it. So we have these two basic sides that are symmetrical. So I actually just designed this once, and then I mirrored it using Mesh Lab. And what you do is you take the control boards that we built and you bolt them into these. Here's one of the shoulder buttons. There's an opening for it. And it has a recess on it so the screw can be flush. All right, there's the first shoulder buttons. Then for the analog shoulder buttons, I made these things. Now these will be held in place just by the fact that there'll be a casing around them. For now, I'll probably just put a small dab of glue just so they behave. Behave. While those parts dry, I'm going to start on the charge plug. Oh, that's actually backwards. Now I made this case as four different pieces, basically so it would print more reliably. Instead of spending five hours printing the whole thing, I spent about two hours printing each piece, so if any one part fails, you don't waste as much time. This is kind of how it'll go together. And I made these little lips, see how it interlocks? And for the front and the back, I'm gonna use laser cut pieces of plastic because it'll give us a much better finish than 3D printing will. Laser cut, a front, nice generic white. And we've got these discs that will go around the analog buttons. I'm going to need to manually remove a few parts of the disc. As you can see, it hits our spacers there. He's the best agent we have. Call me Fringe. What I'm doing now is I'm gluing the 3D printed walls to the laser cut front plate. Man, that seven inch screen makes this thing enormous. It's like the uh, Wii U controller. Oh no, we built a Wii U controller. So I'm gonna start building everything into this, and then once I have that far along, then I will actually make the rear plate of it. That's because there might be some things I might wanna change for the rear half of the plate, so I wanna have the flexibility to do that. Now I'm going to put together all the buttons. I made 3D printed raised portions for the buttons, and then I laser cut graphics so they'll look nice. There's a home button, volume buttons, all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to start putting it together. We put the LCD in first because it's the largest component and we want to make sure that it's lined up to the aperture in the front of the unit. And I'm also going to put the speaker at the lowest level as well. There are a lot of things we have to put in and we have to make sure they're in the right order. Like this power switch. We make sure everything is aligned and then we insert our 3D printed buttons and D-pad. All right, I've got pretty far with this here. I'm pretty much to the point where I need to reintegrate the controller Bluetooth module. 
There should be plenty of room to mount it behind one of these PCBs. And then I'll have to wire it up to the, uh, all the buttons and the analog sticks. The surface mount connections on the Bluetooth module are fairly small, but they are still human solderable. I'm going to add a little bit of solder to each connection, making it just a little bit easier to work with. I want to make sure the wires are only as long as they need to be because if they're too long, they'll take up space and the unit won't go together. Okay, I'm attaching the components here and attaching the external resistors, capacitors, and transistors that we need. I've attached the analog sticks here and I'm wiring them up to the Bluetooth controller the same way as the buttons. Since we don't have circuit boards made, we have to use wires and we have to make sure that they all fit. Now it's time for a tech timeout. One computer I've always wanted to hack is the Timex Sinclair Spectrum, and luckily a fan from Ireland named Sean sent me one. And here it is. Uh, this is a whole 8-bit computer. It's got a Z80 processor, uh, built-in speaker for sound. It's pretty primitive, but this thing was quite popular in Europe and the United Kingdom back in the 80s, and it was supported into the 90s even. Let's take a look inside. <laughs> oh, this is a far cry from my Atari 800. There's not much to it. There's, um, I don't know, I'm sure one of these is a display processor. This is probably the Z80. Here's the famous defective RAM. They put in defective 64K chips so they could get a working 32K, just anything to save a buck. There's not much to it. It only has silk screen on one side even. Look at this insane heatsink coming off the 7805. So if you have any cool ideas of what I could do with a Timex Sinclair Spectrum, send them into the show. We're always looking for great ideas. My default idea is to make it into a portable Timex Sinclair Spectrum laptop, of course. I mean, it's so cute. After a few hours of soldering, I have the controller all hooked up. Here's a Bluetooth module that we took out of the controller. Here is the control panel for the LCD. We wired up a couple of the buttons to the front face, specifically volume up and down. Here is the OUYA and its heatsink. Here's an external USB connector connected to the OUYA. Over here, we have the other controls. Try to put those all in one ribbon cable. So there's a ribbon cable here and here to connect the two control halves together. The speaker down here. You can see one of our volume buttons there. And here's our charge jack. Let's see if it works. All right, looks like the controller is working. So we have both our analogs, our D-pad, OUYA power, the home button, and the OUYA buttons, along with the shoulder buttons as well. Now I'm going to install the batteries. I have this pair of lithium ion cells and I've split it open and I'm going lengthwise with it so I can put it right here. That should work. I also need to attach a balancer to it so when it charges it does it correctly. So I've wrapped electric tape around all the exposed areas and I lowered the volume switch just so we have a little bit more room for it. So here's the charge plug that works with this Tenergy charger. And I'm going to uh, attach ground here. Just gonna strip the wire at the halfway point. There we go. I'm attaching ground to the center terminal of this charger, which is a little weird, but there's a reason for that. The reason is, see the three pins in this charger? When you plug in the barrel plug, it disconnects these two. So basically it kind of lets you choose what is connected to the battery. So when you plug in the charger, it disconnects the battery mechanically from the OUYA circuit. And then when you unplug the charger, it reconnects the battery. So that way you're not accidentally trying to charge or put the charge current through the OUYA. And I'm gonna bring this power cord over 
this way and hook it back up to the Ouya because we have a common ground. We have common ground. Let's go over here. Snip this guy off. Use my auto strippers. Oh, didn't quite hit it there. There we go. Connect the ground here. Now I'm going to attach the positive terminal of the battery to the charge plug. I always want to make sure there's no completed circuits because I don't want to accidentally short out or discharge this lithium ion battery because they they're powerful, which means they can fail powerfully, for lack of a better word. Okay. So I'm gonna attach this to this switch, and this will be our main master on switch. Everything's in place. I've got my back lid here, and it has a 3D printed raised portion, which is the grate to allow air in for the heatsink. We can screw this thing together and test it out. All right, switch on the main power. There's a screen. Let's activate the Ouya. Wow, the screen really makes the unit large, but uh, it's pretty much the smallest HDMI screen I could find. Uh, is Ouya booting? There it is. So this unit could have been a lot smaller, but the screen increased its size. But you know, what are you gonna do? have our volume controls here. Yep, let's put it at 42, all right. Oh, we gotta activate the controller because it's Bluetooth. We get the controller, come on. Oh, there it is, okay. Let's play the one game we have, which is Pinball Arcade, of course. Play. It's like the fake Pinball Wizard music. He's a pinball expert, has to be a gimmick. Oh, wait, I have to. Ah, there we go. <laughs> so yes, oh yeah, kind of seems like an obvious thing to make into a portable because it's small and whatnot. But you know, there's certain things about this project that don't make a ton of sense. We could have made a, uh, taken a tablet and built a controller into it, which would be basically the same thing as an Ouya portable. But you know, it's always fun to, you know, take hardware and hack it up and see what you can make out of it. So it was fun in that aspect. And it definitely works. Plus Ouya games are all meant to have a controller. So you know the controller will work with all of them. I know there's some efforts to standardize controller for other tablets, but you know, they're really not that far along. So there you have it, the Ouya Portable. With the Ouya project complete, Allison Harriet was able to continue her dreams of becoming a world championship pinball wizard. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to make handlebar bike warmers for crazy people who ride their bicycles to work in the winter. Hey! We'll see you then. Mediocrities of the world, I am your patron saint. I'm gonna get my revenge. If we need another take, it'll be USB 3.0. With the Ouya project complete, Allison Harriet was able to continue her pursuit, became a world... Why do I keep saying became? It's not very becoming of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, aren't you gonna be insulted by that? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> the Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs>